Hey everyone and welcome back to another video from Inside Wire. So my UDM Pro decided to update itself last night to version 6. I was actually planning to do this at some point, however it decided to do it for me. If you're not sure how to upgrade the UDM Pro, I have a video where I go through how to upgrade the Unify Network Controller via SSH. It's fairly straightforward, so there's nothing to worry about. Back to the video, we'll be looking at the differences between version 5 and version 6. If you're looking to know exactly what versions I'm running in two different browsers, I'm running 5.14.23 in one and 6.0.33 in another. Before we get started, be sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications for when I upload more great content. I have some more videos planned with the configurations within the Unify system, so be sure not to miss out. So everything used in this video are in the description below, so feel free to check them out. If there's something you'd specifically like me to look at, drop me a comment in the section below and I'll see what I can do. So let's do this. Switching to the screen, you can see I have two UDM Pros. Uh, the one on the left hand side is a version 6. Uh, it's actually 6.0.33 to be precise. And on the right hand side, I've got 5.14.23. So let's have a look at some of the comparisons between the two. You can see straight off that the dashboard as when you initially log into Unify Network is completely different. It has changed quite a bit. There is still some of the same similar sort of information on there, but it has changed slightly. So let's have a quick look through at what's here. So on the right hand side, you can see we have version five. Um, we have the internet capacity, which I don't, I don't think it worked uh, very well. It did work, but not, not to uh, what it should be. Um, you have your switches, access points and guests, etc, etc. You've got your throughput down below, latency, and you've got some metrics further down. So any anomalies, associated failures, etc, etc. So on the new dashboard, it's very simplified. Um, it just gives you the basic information you need really. So you have what the item is in the top left hand corner, your service provider, you have speed tests, and you have actually real time usage, which is uh, I think a really useful feature for some people to see how much of the bandwidth is being used, how many clients you have on the network and their breakdown via OS, and the Wi-Fi experience down below. So it can show you Along here, you can break this down. So if I look at this down below the Wi-Fi experience, you can see you've got 2.4 or even five gigahertz and it can change it for you. Same with the clients, you can look at wired, wireless and guest. On here, you can view the traffic. So if we go onto here, it will show you the draft traffic broken down and there's some more tabs at the top that you're probably fairly familiar with. So some system stats, um, performance stats. I don't think any of this is really too new so I'm not going to delve a little bit deeper into them. Um, switch stats and let's have a look at some speed tests which I've not actually done any on here. So if we go back to the dashboard again, um, I'm actually going to quickly run a speed test to see what we're getting. So let's have a quick look how this works, how well it works. Okay, so it's showing about 640 mega, 650 nearly megabits per second download and the upload to be around about 40. So yeah, I mean, that's that's roughly what I expect. There you go. So uh, let's actually set this properly. So let's, let's actually, it's actually got 500 connections. So I'm actually getting better than that, which is good. And the upload is 40-ish. So let's close that. So. It then updates these figures and you get a rough idea of actually how much utilization of your BAM, how much bandwidth is actually being used. So on the left hand side where you have your buttons, you can see there's a slight change in some of them. So you've got your map further to the top now, whereas your map was down here and it's actually, so we have a new symbol of the map. Uh, so if we have a quick look on here, again, this doesn't look like too much has changed. Do keep in mind, this is the first time I'm also looking at this as well. So I've not actually seen what is new in here. So we're looking at this together. Um, so this looks fairly similar. Possibly the topology refresh is a little bit quicker. Um, hopefully there's been some improvements in there. I've seen some issues with the topology in the past where it does update and it does give you a fairly accurate picture, but it takes, 
it's not as instant as you would probably want it to be. Moving down, we have devices. Um, probably not too much change here. I mean, this is fairly similar to what you're used to seeing. Um, I think my switch is due an upgrade. We'll have to do one of those. And the UDM Pro. So not too much on my network. If we look at clients itself, you can see, again, not too much has changed in this part. You've got your filters at the top, add clients or configure clients, your view settings. So probably not too much difference on this, net, on this tab. Statistics, I think this is what we saw earlier from the traffic stats. So you can actually have a look on here and see what, how much traffic um, is being used and where it's being used at. So looking at insights, I think this is fairly similar to what we've seen in the past. I mean, we can just quickly run across here uh, to insights on this side. And you can see, yeah, I mean, it's all the same by the looks of it. Yeah, I mean, it all seems to be the same there. So there's nothing changed on that part. And threat management, again, not too much that's changed here. Um, if we go on to threat management on this side, other than it's moved above, um, there's not really too much that's changed. Maybe a few distinct color differences, but again, not really too much. Moving down, we've got events. Uh, again, yeah, not a lot that's changed too much there. Alerts, uh, the help center. So if we click on the help, this will take you to Unify's website. And if we go into settings, so this is where the side-by-side -side comparison probably comes a bit more in handy. So you can see straight away that there is some very big differences in the setting changes um, and how it is laid out. So we have the Wi-Fi up here um, where you can add a new Wi-Fi network, for example, um, or even the guest access. So this is where you would set up all your guest VLANs. So it looks like you can create multiple guest networks, which is good. Uh, looking at networks, so these are all the different VLANs that are set up. So whereas before you would probably find this in local networks, I'm going to try and find some of the older settings compared to the new ones to see how much more difficult it is to navigate. Uh, if we have a look at security, so internet security on here, you've got threat management, IP filtering, DPI, content filtering, network scanning advanced. So if we have a look at internet threat management, let's have a look at what's on here. Um, IDS, uh, minimum level, yeah. So I mean, this is fairly, again, all fairly similar to what, it looks a little bit different, but the, the settings itself are the same. So one thing additionally, as it clearly says here, enabling IDS, IPS will affect your throughput. Whereas on the old one, it just says about the Dream Machine Pro. Um, I can't remember if I had a security gateway on here and whether that actually popped up. I don't think it did, but it says on here that it will affect the throughput to 85 megabits per second if you have it enabled. So let's, sorry, let's go back to traffic and device identification. So we've got DPI, restrictions. So if you want to add some um, rest restricted definitions and the assignments where you want those assigned to. So you can actually assign restrictions to specific networks. Perhaps we can um, later on down the line do a video on this so we can talk about how um, the restrictions are set up. And then we move on to internet. So this is fairly straightforward. I mean, this is just the WAN IP um, and the settings along here. Uh, let's go down to system settings. So I think this is where probably the majority of some of the other settings would be. So we have where you are, your preferred language, time format, dashboard. So you can actually choose to use the new uh, beta version of the dashboard layout or you don't have to and same with the settings So if you were to turn this off, you can actually probably go back to the old settings So if you don't like it, you can just turn it off if you want. So let's give that a quick go So let's turn them off. Let's click apply And there you go. You've gone back to the old settings now and go back to the new settings again uh, And it seems like there's a new client. So there's an alpha version of the clients page as well So we'll, we can have a look at that shortly um, maintenance, so it shows you here what version you've got running. Um, the UI is 3.2 and the back end is 3.3. Updates, so these are where all your backup settings are. So if you want to update your firmware automatically, your settings are there. 
uh, statistical data retention so you can manipulate some of these if you want to collect data or just turn it off completely entirely up to you uh, support information probably not too much we're interested in at the moment um, unify AI so not something I've looked at yet but it says coming soon unify AI automatically detects and sets the most commonly missed but vital settings to improve your Wi-Fi network performance so I do have it turned on at the moment um, and I don't think there's any changes that need to be done let's have a quick look down here so it's just saying what channels to exclude it's checking the APs so yeah I, I think I would like to dig a little bit deeper on that one but that goes beyond the uh, scope of this video at the moment anyway let's have a look at the advanced features so we've got the switch profiles here uh, network isolation so if we have a look at this we can say I want to isolate this network completely um, and you can do that and any client groups controller configuration um, so there's overriding the host information real-time updates in web browser and if you want to use the Google Maps API and remote logging so if you've got a syslog server set up um, you can actually send all your logs to a remote syslog server uplink connectivity monitor um, NTP settings, SSH, and mail server. So going back to system settings, looking at uh, the alpha version of the client's page. So I'm going to quickly go to the client's page and you can see what it looks like at the moment. Um, and then if I go back and just wait for that to load. If I enable that, then apply the changes. If we go back to the client's page now, we can see it looks a little bit different. If I actually compare one of these clients against an old one, so it's devices. So if I compare this against a client, just click on the top one, for example. Um, you can see there's a bit of history there and some configuration settings. Whereas these new ones, if I click on this, you can see there's quite a bit on here. There's the general tab, which has the network settings, what traffic, you can have a look at some of the traffic on here, history, and endpoint scans. I think there isn't really as much on here. I think if you have a look at some of the settings on here, I mean, they've just moved it a little bit further to the top, probably made it a bit more slicker, uh, rather than going deeper down into um, each tab. So it's more available at the top. I have to say, I am a fan of the new version 6 interface and the settings layout. There are going to be some changes coming down the line from Unify. You can see some of the dashboards are still in alpha and beta, so you can imagine they're coming out fairly soon. This could be frustrating for some users as there's lots of changes, new interfaces to learn. I also imagine this being frustrating for some users as there's lots of changes and in some cases you need to dig a little bit deeper to find the settings. Overall, I'm happy that the system pushed me to version 6 as I was a bit reluctant based on some of the issues that some people have faced in the past. Now keep in mind my setup at home is probably minimal compared to some of the other production setups. I would also like to see I would also like to see Unify expand on the topology a bit, perhaps showing some of the link speeds and the current throughputs across links within the internal network, thus making it easier to spot some of the bottlenecks. This is just one I thought off the top of my head just now, but there's plenty of areas that can be, that can be improved. Again, be sure to subscribe to my channel and be notified when I upload more videos. I really hope you found this informative. If you've enjoyed this video, do hit that like button. This is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.